What's the most supernatural experience you've ever had? Part 2 January 1st, 2003 A stretch of road between two coastal towns in Australia. It was a dark and stormy night. No, really it was. Driving along with my partner, I noticed a car coming up behind us traveling fast. It was a single lane road, so we couldn't move over. I said to my partner, this guy is in a hurry, let him overtake you. My partner agreed, and he moved left as soon as there was an overtaking lane. The car pulled up beside us and then disappeared. There was nowhere it could have gone. We sat in silence for a few minutes, and I said, did you see that? He said, yep. In 2018, my grandpa was in the hospital due to being in a very bad diabetic state. No one wanted to say it, but he was close to the end of his life. My sister and a few cousins flew out to see him, and he was getting worse. I wanted to go, but I couldn't due to money, and it was killing me because him and I were extremely close. He ends up passing away a couple of weeks later, and when my grandma called, she said he kept asking for me and my mom before he passed, and that crushed me. I wanted to say my final goodbyes. I love that man so much. Then one night, I had an extremely vivid dream that I was at a beautiful ranch in Mexico, and I walked through the gates and saw this long house with many cars outside. I went in and opened the door, and I was greeted by my aunt. I gave her a hug and turned to look who was all there, and sitting right in the corner was my grandpa, smiling. He stood up, and I ran to him and gave him the biggest hug. I woke up right after and cried tears of joy slash sadness. It felt so real. I met a girl a long time ago, like close to 20 years ago. We hung out off and on, nothing significant really, just as friends, and told stories about our lives and other stupid shit. After a while, she told me a story about a house she used to live in, in a neighboring city. She told me about how she'd experienced the same thing, the same haunting, every few nights. Her bedroom was upstairs, and the kitchen, dining room, a bathroom, and another bedroom were in the basement. Easiest way to access them was through the garage. That's how everyone came inside anyway. No one used the actual front door upstairs. Anyway, in the middle of the night, she'd hear someone enter through the garage and go into the kitchen, they were basically attached. The faucet would turn on, and a bowl or something would crash in the sink. The water would stop. The footsteps would continue through the dining room and to the staircase. It was a mini spiral staircase that led to the living room. Her bedroom was attached to that. Then the footsteps would stop halfway up. It was only about ten steps before the top, but she said they'd always stop at the same point. When she told me this, I panicked. I asked her the address. It was the same house I'd lived in as a kid, four years before she did. And I experienced the same thing. Only, I'd never told a single person about it. Not my parents, my brothers, my friends, no one. Yet, she described it perfectly, step by step, room by room. That house was always weird, even before my own experience. But never have I had a shared haunting moment like that. When I was 15, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw this strange spotlight appear on my wall. It was a circle made up of a bunch of bright circular dots within it. It came on strong, then rotated 90 degrees and then turned off. It was so surreal because the light was extremely bright and yet it was also focused on that one spot on my wall. When I woke up the next morning, I couldn't get the image out of my head, but I just assumed I must have dreamt it. My sister and I were talking over breakfast, and she said, I had this dream last night, my entire room suddenly lit up with these circular dots floating around my room. I got really excited. That actually happened. I woke up and saw it too. My sister froze. How is that possible? My blinds are completely shut. Chills. To this day. I saw my deceased ex-husband in my kitchen. I was watching TV in my living room in the middle of the day and kept hearing this sound, like someone was jiggling their change around, and it was loud, as if it were in the room with me. I paused my TV, yet the sound persisted. So I start to look around the room, and when I got to the kitchen, I saw him standing there. He was looking around as if taking stock of my apartment. Oh, and he was jiggling change in one hand while flipping a quarter in between his fingers with the other hand something he did a lot of 
when he was alive. He turned his head and saw me frozen, staring at him. The expression on his face I knew would never forget. His eyes got huge, and he was kind of tilted his head forward with the expression like, You can see me? I don't know how long we stared at each other for, but I turned away when I started to hear my cat ripping up the fucking carpet again in the other room. When I turned back to my ex, he was gone. It's worth noting that he had only been dead for a couple of months, too. Some Romanian women I worked with told me that the dead stick around for three months before crossing over. I don't know about all that, but I know without a shadow of a doubt what I saw that day. The summer after graduating high school, my friends and I took a road trip to stay in a couple of haunted places. I was super interested in ghosts at the time, but had never had any real experiences. Our first stop was a haunted B&B we found in our haunted Texas book. After exploring every unlocked room in the place, we'd gone out for the evening and come back fairly late. While it seemed the other guests were asleep, we went downstairs to play around and take photos hoping to catch a ghost with all of our new digital cameras pre-iPhone days. We were having a good time, giggling and scaring ourselves, when we heard the front doorknob rattle. We all stopped and turned to the door, a little nervous about being caught by someone coming in late. Not that we were doing anything wrong, but we really didn't want to explain we were looking for ghosts. We watched and heard the doorknob jiggle and turn, but no one ever came in. We got a little spooked at that point, thinking it may be someone was trying to get in who shouldn't. Our fun mood broken, we went up to bed. After a restless night without a single ghost, we got up in the morning to go to SeaWorld. When we left the B&B that morning, we went through the front door and all stopped short. We had forgotten until that moment that the front door was protected by a glass outer door that creaked loudly when we opened it and slammed shut. We hadn't heard the glass door at all the night before, when we watched the front doorknob turn back and forth. With a few shared glances, we said nothing and continued on our day to SeaWorld. We were all so freaked out that we never talked about it beyond saying it was weird. That was the only thing that spooked us through the entire trip, except our own imaginations. My aunt and uncle owned a house that had quite a history. It was a funeral home, a hospital, and a sanatorium long before they bought it with the dream of turning it into a bed and breakfast. There are three instances that really stick out. We were emptying the basement out of old trash and we found a false wall revealing a secret cabinet with a hand in a jar. No idea what the hell it was all about, but later on that day, we were all eating pizza, and my cousins and I were wandering around and ended up at the base of the stairs of the basement where we could hear what sounded like children's whisper and laughter. My cousins and I were going to clean up the boxes out of the attic. It was pitch black, so my cousin grabs a flashlight and starts to head up. As soon as he gets into the attic, the flashlight dies. He comes down and it works again, but when he gets into the attic, it dies again. He climbed down and shined the light on the wall and into the attic where again, the light died. The light would not shine in the attic. This is the last one. My cousins and I were in the balcony room. Supposedly it belonged to a rich elderly lady who was dying of tuberculosis and paid for this room to be redone with a walkout balcony overseeing the town. My cousins and I walked out to the edge of the balcony and gazed out when all of a sudden the door, about 15 feet away, slammed shut. It was the dead of winter and there was no wind. It slammed with so much force I had to really throw my shoulder into it to open the door again. My uncle, who was downstairs working, didn't hear a thing. There were a few other weird, unexplainable things that happened, but those three still stick with me like 10 years later. This happened to me when I was around 19 and still living with my mom. It was the night before Three Kings Day. I was fast asleep in bed when suddenly I woke up with a loud thought in my head screaming, you're not alone. I was facing the wall and all my hairs stood on end. I started hearing what sounded like clothes rustling, like someone was moving quietly in my room. I was scared shitless, but at this point it's like, god damn it, now I have to look. And when I did, Ay Dios mío. I saw at the foot of my bed something that looked to be around three feet tall, wearing a white coat. I shat myself 
and did the only thing a 19-year-old brave woman can do. I hid under the covers and turned on the TV. When I looked again, it was gone. I called my then-boyfriend to tell him what I saw. He laughed and said it was one of the three kings. Idiot. Next morning, I walked downstairs and my mom and stepdad are having breakfast. I told him what I saw and my mom just gave me the weirdest look as I told my story. When I was done, she just told my stepdad, tell her about my dream. And he says, what, were you dreamt with the exact same thing? Yeah, I shot myself a second time. She had a dream that same night where small white robed creatures were trying to bother her like little imps or something. What came in my room also went through my mother's dreams. Four years ago, my fiancé died. He and his parents were American, but we were living in another country, so in less than a week we had to clean the house. We took with us some things in the plane, but everything else was shipped. When I got back to the US, I realized I can't find some earrings he gave to me in our first anniversary. I called my mum back home to check if I had left them somewhere, but had no luck. I was absolutely devastated. Few months go by and one of his aunts had a dream with him, and apparently he said, Tell Fingerhut89 I have them. So, the aunt had no idea what was this about, but she told me, and at the time I didn't really get it. Few more months, and we finally receive the cargo with all of our stuff. I start unpacking, and found this little box where he used to put things like coins, keys, and my earrings. I miss him so much. I used to leave my earrings everywhere and he was always telling me, can you please put them in one place? You were going to lose them. When my two dads moved into our home in New Jersey when I was 15, it was a real fixer-upper. It was built in 1942 and had been owned by the same couple, though the previous owner, a widow, had died of old age. I didn't know what had happened to her husband. There was a back room in our basement that freaked me the fuck out. It was small and my dad used it as a storage till we could remodel the whole area. I would hate whenever one of them would ask me to get something from that room. I felt as though I was not alone. I was being watched, and it was just the most unsettling, dismal feeling. Our family dog, Roxy, who was a Rhodesian Ridgeback and not easily spooked, refused to set foot, Paul, I guess, into this room. My Nana came to visit us for a little while after she left. The room felt much lighter and I was okay being there. I asked her why. She's always been a little kooky, and she told me she can see and communicate with ghosts. She said there was a ghost of a man who had been in the house and didn't understand that he was dead. She had told her that he really liked how my dads were decorating, but didn't understand why we were here. She told him he was dead and he needed to move on. He tipped her hat to her and walked through the front door, never to be seen again. I later found out that the old widow's husband had committed suicide in that room that I hated so much. My stepdad found some of the watercolors he painted and displayed them. My stepdad was an artist. This was mid-2000s. I was asleep in my room with my girlfriend at the time at my mom's house. I was about 25. It was sometime after midnight and we were both startled awake by the sound of loud, angry voices engaged of some kind of fiery argument downstairs. Most of the discussion was impossible to hear, save for the occasional f-bomb or other swear words. It was intense, and we both looked at each other in shock, I believe. I truly thought our house was being burglarized. My mom was asleep down the hall, and I didn't hear her stirring. I told my girlfriend to use my cell phone and call 911 if she heard me getting into it with whoever was in our home. I grabbed my pistol from my desk and I tried to slink downstairs. The voices cut off as soon as I left my bedroom. The house was quiet as I banked a left turn to the top of the stairs. I listened for noises and heard nothing. I descended the stairs, cursing every loose floorboard in that old house. The moment I landed on the first floor, I began clearing the rooms and flicking lights on as I went. My heart was racing. I was sure that at any moment I would be face to face with the people I had heard moments before, but the entire house was empty. The TV was off, the DVD player as well. The front door remained locked and bolted. 
The motion lights had not been activated. All the windows were shut, making it less likely that the noise could have been coming from some sort of domestic disturbance in the neighborhood. There was just no way to rationalize what I slash we heard. If it had just been me, I would have attributed it to one of my usual nightmares as I'm a vet diagnosed with PTSD, but the fact that we both woke up and both heard it made me feel a bit more uneasy. There's probably some very rational explanation, but I truly believe there was some dark energy at play in that house. My mother said she felt it on a number of occasions coming from the coat closet on the main floor. When she would reach for a coat, she felt like something wanted to shut her in there. My brother reportedly saw a phantom or ghost, not sure the difference, floating above him after he woke up in the afternoon. He's not the type to make that sort of stuff up, and he parted with the story very reluctantly. I believe everyone had an experience there. 